Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the second video for Chapter 1, Section 6 in your pre-calculus book. This is going to take a much deeper look at the idea of function composition uh, and we'll provide more practice with some more varied forms of composition. So remember that when we compose, we start on the inside and work our way out. Now if that's written in a certain type of notation, then we would start on the right. So remember that if we're looking at f of g of x, which could also be written as f of g of x, that's what we're talking about when we say the right, we need to do g of x first, okay? We are going to start by evaluating g of x, because that's on the inside, and then we'll take the answer from g of x and plug it into f of x. Okay, we did a little bit of this in the first video, so we're going to continue now. So again, it's more about practice here. So here's two linear functions, f of x and g of x. Let's just quickly review how to do these compositions. We start on the inside. So we would start by doing g of 3, which would be 2 times 3 plus 1, or 7. Then we take that value and we plug it into f of x. So that would be f of 7, which would be 3 times 7 minus 5, which would be 21 minus 5, or 16. G of f of 3, we would start by doing f of 3, which would be 3 times 3 minus 5, that would be 9 minus 5 or 4, and then we would take that value and plug it into g of x. So we'd be doing g of 4, which would be 2 times 4 plus 1, that's 8 plus 1, meaning 9. We could also do that with the same function twice in a row. For instance, f of f of 4. We would start by doing f of 4. 3 times 4 minus 5 would be 7. And then f of f of 4 would really be f of 7. Because what we're doing each time is taking our output and putting it in to the next function. 7 goes in here. We do f of 7 which would be 3 times 7 minus 5, or again, 21 minus 5, 16, coincidentally, again. Okay, g of g of negative 1, we would start with g of negative 1, which would be 2 times negative 1 plus 1, which would be negative 1. And then to find g of g of negative 1, well, we'd plug in that output, which was negative 1, We've already done that one time, so we just do it again, and we still get the same result, negative 1. We can also do that with variable expressions. So if they ask us to do f of g of x, that's really asking us to do f of 2x plus 1, which would be 3 times 2x plus 1 minus 5. We would distribute to get 6x plus 3 minus 5 and then simplify by combining like terms to get 6x minus 2. Same could be done if it was a different variable expression. It would just require a little bit more work. We'd have to plug 2x into f of x first. So 3 times 2x minus 5 would be 6x minus 5. And then we would need to plug that into g of x, which would be g of 6x minus 5 which would be 2 times 6x minus 5 plus 1. Distribute to get 12x minus 10 plus 1, and then combine like terms to get our final answer of 12x minus 9. All right, so then those, that's a very easy example of composition to hopefully remind you how this process works. Remember that what we're doing each time is taking the output and feeding it back in to the next function, okay? So in this case, in the middle there, we're putting 2x plus 1 in for g of x. All right, so here's a harder example. Uh, h of x, k of x, p of x, and m of x are given. In this case, h and m are still linear, but k of x is a quadratic and p of x is a square root. So again, it still doesn't make any difference how this works. We still work from the inside to the outside. So we would start with h of 2, which would be 7 minus 2 times 2, which would be 7 minus 4, or 3. Then we take that value and we plug it into k of x. So 
that'd be k of 3, which would be 3 squared plus 3 times 3 plus 5. That's 9 plus 9 plus 5, which would be 23. Okay, h of m of 1 means we need to start by doing m of, sorry, negative 1, means we need to start by doing m of negative 1. So m of negative 1 would be 3 times negative 1 plus 2, or negative 1. Then we would plug that value into h of x, meaning we do h of negative 1, which would be 7 minus 2 times negative 1, meaning that h of m of negative 1 is 9. We can also do that with expressions. So since p of x is the square root of 3x plus 1, k of p of x means that we're taking that square root and we're plugging it into k of x in place of x. So that would be the square root of 3x plus 1, quantity squared, plus 3 times the square root of 3x plus 1, plus 5. Now this middle section, there's nothing we can do with that. But when we square a square root, it disposes of the root, meaning we're looking at three x plus one plus three times the square root of three x plus one plus five. We can add the one and the five together to give us our final answer. Three x plus six plus three times the square root of three x plus one. Which is a little bit cramped, but there's the answer down there, okay? All right, now where this gets more complicated is it doesn't have to be an equation that you are given. So here we have four different functions described. f of x is given as a graph. g of x is given as a table. h of x is given as a piecewise function where the uh, domain is broken up around the value x equals 1. And k of x is described in words. So before we start the problem, we should write out k of x. K of x is a quadratic function, so that tells us our parent. It has shifted two units to the right. That tells us that h is positive 2. Three units up, which tells us k is 3. And it is reflected over the x-axis. That tells us that a is negative 1, which means k of x is negative x minus 2 squared plus 3. In addition, we can clean up the, one of the y values of g of x in that table. We have a greatest integer 2 minus 2.1. Well, that would be the greatest integer less than or equal to negative 0.1, which is negative 1. So this value is really negative 1. Okay, so then from there, it's just exactly what we've been doing. We just have to use some of our other skills from the chapter. We have to be able to pull values off a table, out of a chart, or evaluate a piecewise function. These are all things we have to be comfortable with for the chapter one test anyway. So f of g of 3, we would start by finding g of 3. Well, g of 3 is not in the table. If it's not in the table, then we don't have any idea what it is, which means we cannot determine. Okay, we, there's no solution to this answer because we do not have an output value for g of 3. Okay, on the next one, f of 8, that's on the chart or on the uh, graph. When x equals 8, y equals negative 1. We've got that point right there, 8, negative 1. Yeah? So h of f of 8 is equal to h of negative 1, which is less than 1. So that would get plugged into the absolute value piece, 7 plus 3 times negative 1 would be the absolute value of negative 7 minus 3, or the absolute value of negative 10, which is 10. Finally, g of k of 0, we would start with k of 0. 
which means we are evaluating our k of x equation when x equals 0. So we plug in 0 for x and evaluate. That would be negative, negative 2 squared plus 4, sorry, plus 3, which would be negative 4 plus 3, or negative 1. So then, to find g of k of that value, well, that's g of negative 1. That is in the table, and that is our greatest integer of 2 minus 2.1, which we just got done saying is greatest integer less than or equal to negative 0 0.1, which would round down to negative 1. There are three more examples with this information. Okay, so again, we've already got k of x. We said this is negative 1, and we said k of x was negative x minus 2 squared plus 3. Okay, so f of, f of 2, we would start by evaluating f of 2, which is on the graph as the point 2, 1. which means f of f of 2 is f of 1. Well, f of 1 is 4, because f of 1 refers to the point 1, 4. So our answer here would be 4. g of h of 1, we would start with h of 1, which at 1 we are told that x, when x equals 1, h of x equals negative 4. So g of h of 1 is really g of negative 4, which is given in the table as being pi. Okay, and again, that's all in the table there. h of 1 is the second piece of the piecewise function. When x equals 1, h equals negative 4. And then we turn around and say g of negative 4, well, that's this column. Negative 4 has an output of pi. The last one is just us stringing a whole bunch of these together. Remember, we start on the inside, which would be on the right, with k of 3. So we would evaluate that function at x equals 3. So k of 3 is negative 1 squared plus 3, which would be 2 is that would be negative 1 plus 3, which is 2. So then we would do h of 2. Well, h of 2, uh, 2 is greater than 1, so that would equal negative x, which would be negative 2. Then we turn around and we say f of negative 2. We go to the graph, and at negative 2, x equals 2. And finally, g of 2 will give us our final answer, in the table, g of 2 is 3. So our final answer there is 3. And again, all of that is just a matter of taking your answer from the previous step and plugging it into the next function. Okay, And then we go in there and we look at h of 2. Well, h of 2, that would be plugged in here. That would be this piece. Okay, h of 2 would be negative x. Well, if x is 2, then the output's negative 2. We take that value, we put it into f of x. Well, we can find that point, okay? Negative 2, 2, okay, is the location on the graph, okay? It's all about just stringing these things together. So then g of 2, well, g of 2 is in our table. g of 2 is 3. So it's all about using these skills that we've previously established in this lesson. That does it for the second set of notes. Thank you very much for your time and attention.